Today I'm going to show you three tips about the scopes in DaVinci Resolve that you might not already know. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have three clips loaded near the bottom there. This clip right here is from ArtGrid. I have a promotion for you guys. Go ahead and take a look in the description below for more details. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is, now let me go ahead and drag my scopes from my other screen over here. And this is our RGB parade. Let's say you wanted to do a balance on this person right here in the middle. Now, analyzing the scene, you could probably make the determination that this line right in the middle is that person. If you wanted to get more specific, you could come over here, choose the three dots, go to display qualifier focus. And now if we hover over the person, we can see definitively, if I move up and down his uh, body there, you can see it does reflect the middle portion of the RGB scopes. Having said that, it's not necessarily always this easy, or you may want to not be distracted by everything surrounding it. You would think that it'd be easy just to zoom in on the footage. If we come over to the viewer over here, and we go ahead and zoom in, you'll notice that the scopes don't actually zoom in with it. Now, what we could do is come over here to the Edit tab, come up to our inspector, zoom in here, go back to our color page, and now our scopes are a little bit more zoomed in. Obviously, that's a lot of additional steps. And let me go ahead and leave the scopes up so you can see exactly what's happening. So I'll head back to the Edit tab. And as I zoom in and out, you'll notice that the scopes actually change now. The problem is you're doing it here on the Edit screen. So now if you wanted to do any color work, you'll have to head back over into the color page. Well, there's actually a way to do it over there too, and that's my first tip. So first, let's go ahead and reset this zoom back to the original size. Head back over to the color page. If I come down to the bottom here and we head over to the sizing tab, let me go ahead and actually scroll this back out here. There's a zoom function right here. So if we wanted something specific in the scene, as I mentioned before, we could just use the zoom option right here. Now, not only can we zoom, but we also have the pan options in case we wanted to see something to the left or right and the tilt options in which would pan the footage up and down. One thing that I did want to note in this case is it does cap out over here at four, but that's only the slider. If you come over here to the numbers, hover until you see those arrows and then drag, you'll be able to zoom in a little bit more. The second tip that I have for you guys is not only can you zoom in on the footage on the color page to isolate exactly what you're looking at, but you can also zoom in on the scopes themselves. If you hold down the alt tab in windows, at least if you hold down the alt tab and you scroll in, you'll see that you can really focus on an area without being distracted by everything around it. And by the way, this does work on a Mac too. Obviously you'll just have to choose the option key. And you can come back here and you can scroll back out. But sometimes if you happen to move the mouse like this, if you're using the scroll wheel and it goes off the screen and you're not sure where it is, you can just come up here, go back to reset view. Oh, no, I just clicked on those slider options here, reset view, and we're back to normal. The last thing I wanted to show you is a scope that probably isn't used that much, but I find pretty useful. Admittedly, I don't use it all the time, but it has served its purpose a few times. So let me bring up this other footage over here. What we're going to do now is change the scope from parade to waveform. And this next step isn't necessarily necessary. It doesn't impact your footage at all. The only thing it really impacts is how you're viewing the scope, but come up to the three dots here choose video level scopes and you can see it just brings more of that footage in there. I can address exactly what that means in a different video, but again, suffice it to say that doesn't really have impact on anything as far as the footage is concerned. It's just what you're looking at here. Now, sometimes the waveform may be a difficult scope to decipher. What it's showing you is the red, blue, and green channels and how they relate to one another. So if you really wanted something to be white, you want those red, green, and blue channels to be at the same level. As mentioned before, to make this a little easier, you could take advantage of the two tips that I mentioned before, where you could just zoom in on the footage or zoom in on the scope so you can see precisely what you're looking at. However, if you come up to these three options right here, the sliders, 
And instead of using RGB, let's go ahead and choose Y. Now the reason I like this is because it shows the different luma values for the colors in your scene. For example, you can see over here we have the red, which is the red on the balloon, the blue next to it, and then so on and so forth. Obviously we have the white too, but the white is a little bit brighter, which is why it's a little bit higher on the scope. There's a little bit of cyan in the sky, which is why you can see some cyan over here. And if I move this out of the way, we have this orange, maybe brown building, and you can see the orange here. So the reason that I like this scope, as I mentioned, is because it's showing you the actual colors. And if you wanted to adjust the brightness levels of a specific color, you can go ahead and do that. For example, if we wanted to choose maybe this color right here, let me move the scope out of the way. Let's go over to curves. We'll choose hue versus luminance. I'll grab the eyedropper, click on that. I went ahead and clicked on the building. Keep an eye on the scope right here. So if I push up the luminance so it's brighter, you'll see that it's lifting up over here. So of course this may not be the best scene for it, but if you wanted to keep your skin tones, for example, within a certain range, this is a great place to do it. In fact, let me go ahead and bring up a different uh, clip. And you'll see exactly what's happening. We have the blue, which pretty much goes through the entire background there. This uh, purple magenta color, I guess, right here on my shirt, the orange for my skin, and the white color off to the side here. So once again, if we wanted to bring up the skin tone, for example, but we wanted to leave the background or make the background darker, we could do that too. So first, let's go ahead and choose the background. So we have our blue down here. Let me lower that to make that a little bit darker and you'll see it move down in the scope. It looks a little blotchy up there. So actually, let me slide this over a little bit more. And then I'll just choose the other node and focus on my skin. Make that a little bit brighter. And you can see in the middle there, I'll make it a little bit too bright, but you'll see in the middle there how the colors start to move up. And then of course we wanted to brighten the whole scene. We could just add another serial node. I wouldn't necessarily do it in this order. I'm just showing you for an example. But then of course we could come over here to the gamma and everything in the scope moves up. So if you didn't know about those three options, hopefully they helped you out. If you like this video, please go ahead and share it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the community. I'd love to have you come along. All my links are in the description below. I'm pretty active over on Twitter. So if you want to go ahead and chit chat, go ahead and sub to me over there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.